Hey guys, Time Boy 601 and today we want to take a look at Rainbow Six Siege and the new operators. We got the details on how all of the new operators are going to work in Blood Orchid and we also got a release date. Unfortunately, it is delayed so stick around to find out all that. <laughs> So like I said, we do now have details on the operators officially from Ubisoft. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, read the article they put out aloud because it's fairly concise and it does a good job of uh, introducing them and, and kind of talking about them and bringing up some good points. So let's, uh, let's go on in. So let's start with the lone attacker, Ying, from the Hong Kong CTU. She brings a trio of Candela devices, small spheres that shoot flash charges into the air and blind anyone nearby. With one exception, Ying herself wears special glasses that make her immune to flashes. So while your enemies are laying low or blindly firing until flash wears off, you can rush in and clear them out. Candelas can be thrown like grenades, but they have a few other deployment options that open up some intriguing strategies. Instead of simply tossing one, you can hold the button down to cook it before release. There are three lights on the candela that will progressively light up for each one lit. The candela will roll along the ground for a little bit longer before firing off the flashes. You can roll it under barricades or through drone holes, allowing you to flash the room before the enemy knows where you're breaching from, or to reach far corners where the defenders are holed up. Alternatively, you can fuse the candela by deploying it on breachable surfaces so it fires the flashes into the room on the other side. Cooking your release here will set an increasingly long delay timer, allowing you to get in position to make your move. Candelas are vulnerable to destruction, so if you set off a breach charge too close or fire through the barricade prematurely, you may foil your own plan. But time, time it properly and you'll have a room full of flashed opponents waiting to be gunned down by Ying's shotgun or LMG. And oh my goodness, am I hyped for Ying now. This, she's pretty much exactly kind of how I predicted it earlier uh, on my last video. But I love the fact that she can't get blinded by the flashbangs. She has this super flashbang. From the sound of it, it sounds like she's also going to get breaching charges, which is all I would really want out of an, an attacker. And the fact that you have now a very powerful flashbang. The one thing I do hope um, is that if you roll it, like it doesn't get destroyed by Jaegers, by by the ADS. I think that would be a cool thing. Like I understand if the mute blocks it. I'm gonna be interested to see how how she is countered. Like whether whether the if you time it long enough where it rolls through a jammer, if it will if you've timed it long enough, if it gets to the middle of the room outside of the jammer's range, then it will go off. But if you if you went for a short one, it, it, it disables it. I think it'll be very interesting to see the interplay between her and the defending operators. But I'm super hyped for her now. Um, while her LMG might not be the best weapon overall, I think her versatility is going to be the key part of playing her. So on the other side of the barricades, Blood Orchid is bringing two new defenders that make infiltration more perilous. First up is Legion from the Hong Kong CTU, who packs throwable goo mines that deploy on the floor and stick any attacker who steps on them with a poison needle. Getting stuck causes visual disorientation, a sort of swampy, queasy filter, and does damage over time as the needle remains in your leg. Attackers can either fight through the disorientation and take the damage, or they can follow an on-screen prompt to remove the needle from their leg, lowering their gun and leaving themselves vulnerable in the process. Unless you're using IQ's electronics detector, you can forget about watching your step. Gu mines are cloaked and all but invisible to anyone but Legion. Legion can see a small icon above each deployed trap, and keeping an eye on those icons can help you respond quickly when one is triggered. He deploys a total of seven mines, but it takes a little while to do so. Legion doesn't start with a full complement of traps. He acquires them as time passes on. The cooldown timer on the screen shows you how many you have available and how long until another one is ready. This means that Legion can continue to mine new areas throughout the match, so the longer the enemy team takes, the more mines he can deploy, whether you're lying in wait to ambush poison enemies with his silenced shotgun or cracking crackling with delight as the enemy succumbs to poison even after you've died legion and his minds are a deadly nuisance 
So that is Legion, and I really like the fact that you can see where his minds are. Like, that makes him a potentially powerful roamer, or if you're on comms where the enemy team is infiltrating in, I really, really like that. I think he's going to be a very powerful person. It all just depends on how much people end up playing IQ once the meta settles in. I'm sure in the opening days of Blood Orchid, IQ is going to be a must pick, but then as people settle back to their olds, I don't know if IQ will be picked as much and therefore he might become more and more effective. I also like the fact that he gains he gains mines over time, giving you an incentive to, to live out and to mine it. I would assume that you get like two or three to start out with and you grow from there, but who knows? I really like Legion overall. He's definitely really cool. And of course, the third new operator is the first member of the Polish CTU, Grom, to take the field. The second one, of course, will be released with the next operation. Ella is a defender who packs Grismot, Grismot meaning thunder in Polish, which are proximity concussion mines that can be thrown and stuck to wall, ceilings, and floors. These beauties will detonate when an enemy gets close, stunning them, disrupting their hearing, and shaking up their view, but doing no damage. Fortunately, Ella is a speedy operator who can close the distance fast when her mines go off in order to capitalize on the opportunity. She has an SMG or a shotgun to do he the heavy lifting, as well as a as well as Siege's first pistol with integrated dot sight for mopping things up. While her mines have an obvious application while defending on site, Ella's speed makes it possible to take a more aggressive roamer approach, laying a nest of mines where you predict enemies will infiltrate, and can be a great way to stymie their advance, forcing them to burn valuable clock time, sneaking up on and throwing down a mine can lead to a very easy kill. If you decide to fall back to the objective site, consider leaving a mine along your retreat vector to discourage pursuers, and if she happens to get down, Ella can manually detonate a concussion mine on her person. She always carries an extra one just for this purpose, giving her allies a better chance to clear the area and revive her. So Ella overall sounds like a really cool roaming operator and one that is just going to kind of cause havoc for the enemy team. I think it's going to end up being a, a tie between her and Cav as far as your your like nuisance roamer. While Cav is very good at giving that information out, I think Ella might have a better like survivability rate and may be a little bit more effective on actually taking people out. But that all depends on the player. Now, the last bit of news is some unfortunate news blood orchid is being delayed to september 5th so for all you destiny players out there it will be the same day destiny comes out which is kind of unfortunate um but yeah they are pushing back the release of this to september 5th so that's that's a little unfortunate i was hoping hoping for august 29th but alas i guess that's the cards we were dealt so guys, what do you think of the new operators? Let me know down below. My name's Tommyboy601. I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.